Good evening. Since we are sheltering in place and worshiping in place, uh, we missed our last Wednesday's devotion uh, during the season of Lent. And we have been using the various sounds of Lent. Um, and we tonight is the sound of the whip or sound of scourging. So we begin our devotion in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we continue our journey with our Lord to Jerusalem and the cross, um, we continue that journey in a strange way in our country and land and in our homes because we are confined because of illness. But we have to remind ourselves that all illness actually comes from our fallen world and things are not perfect. But we again place ourselves and our lives and times in your gracious hands. Uh, be with us as we hear your word again this evening, as we hear another part of the story of our Lord's suffering and death. We ask that in his gracious and holy name. Amen. The sound of the whip. Listen to the words from Isaiah chapter 53. He grew up before the Lord like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The sound of the whip. I don't know about you, but have you ever had the experience of seeing somebody whipped? I shall never forget the movie The Passion of Christ somewhat controversial, 
but it was very, very realistic. And I remember the part of that movie, movie when it came to Jesus being scourged, whipped by the soldiers. It went on what I thought forever. It seemed to be like 10 or 15 minutes in the movie. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The 40 stripes. I had to close my eyes. I could not bear watching the entire scene as it went on and on and on. We often don't know what that really meant in that suffering, but that was part of that little piece. Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They closed him in a purple robe and went up to him and again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck him in the face. Had him flogged. Whip, whip, whip. There is something humiliating about punishment. Children know the feeling well when they have been finished, punished. And the physical punishment is only part of the trauma. The old gospel spiritual Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Later Isaiah says, I have trodden the winepress alone. From the nations, no one was with me. It's more than just physical. It goes to the very depths of our being and our souls. Whip, whip. And then we hear those words from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. In a sense, it is true. God is both just and gracious. Have you ever had to be both? I'm sure that's happened, especially in raising children. He made him sin who knew no sin, that we might be called the righteousness of God in him. Whip! 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 But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. It's human nature to place blame on others. It's easy to blame Pilate. It's easy to blame the Sanhedrin. It's easy to blame God. And sometimes in our lives, we do that. It's harder to admit our own involvement. Whoop. The sound of the whip is ever a part of the passion story and journey to Jerusalem. And yet it's for us that he went. It is for us that he suffered and died. And so we hear those words of the hymn verse. Jesus, and shall it ever be a mortal man ashamed of thee, ashamed of thee whom angels praise, whose glory shine through endless days. Ashamed of Jesus, that dear friend, on whom my hopes of heaven depend. No, when I blush, be this my shame, that I no more revere his name. But he is there for us. And so we journey, and we journey on 
in these days of lockdown, of anxiety, of saying, when will it be over? But we know the rest of the story about Jesus. It is the story of new life and resurrection. And so we too look forward to that day. Let that be our hope as we look to the cross and as we continue our journey with him. Amen. We pray Luther's evening prayer and then also the Lord's Prayer. I thank thee, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. In the family prayer of the church, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with us. Amen.